times need warrants to follow a fleeing suspect into their home. The need for a warrant must be evaluated on a case by case basis when it comes to suspects accused of minor offenses. The Biden administration is supporting the end of racial disparities in sentencing cocaine offenders. Back in 1986, mandated sentences were created for crack cocaine instead of powder cocaine, leading to the incarceration of thousands of people of color over the past decades. The U.S. is ramping up the withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan. Over half of the withdrawal with the September 11th deadline is complete and there is no peace deal in place. The Taliban has taken over 50 towns and districts since May. On the COVID front now, the U.S. is averaging 25 times fewer new cases than five months ago, but there are new fears the Delta variant could set us back. The variant has been discovered in at least 47 states and accounts for one in five cases here in the U.S. The numbers have doubled every two weeks and it could mutate. A new Delta Plus variant has already been found in India. We've got to stop it and we've got to stop it by getting people vaccinated. That's how we uh, stop this variant. Only about a third of 18 to 24 year old Americans have received at least one dose of the vaccine. That age group seeing the highest rate of cases along with 25 to 34 year olds. And new numbers show African Americans and younger people are dying from the virus at higher rates. The CDC now says it's preparing for booster shots of COVID-19 vaccines, which could start this year. In an interagency way, are planning to boost um, because, quite honestly, we want to make sure that um, if we see more disease out there, we have a mechanism, we're fully ready to combat it. She says she does not think the CDC has enough data on boosters to make a decision about timelines yet. Sales of new homes fell for a second month in May. They dropped nearly 60% to 769,000 units. This comes after sales of used homes also fell for a fourth consecutive month. Tomorrow on More in the Morning, we look at how sales are booming here in Albuquerque and hear from an expert. In the nation's capital, despite a push from Democrats, Attorney General Merrick Garland says he does not want to conduct a broad investigation of the Trump administration using the DOJ to carry out personal vendettas. Garland says the Justice Department's Inspector General should handle it. Okay, let's get a live look outside from our PM cam right now. We're seeing above normal heat. Chief Meteorologist Joe Diaz has your statewide forecast. Yeah, that's right. All over the state, it's hotter than normal, but it is an improvement over what we had last week. And I uh, tell you, the big improvement's going to be this week, and we'll talk more about that later in the newscast. But you see a few clouds streaming across Sandia Peak. We have generally fair skies and just a beautiful afternoon across Red River. We'll go to Hemis Springs. And yes, we have sunshine with a few high clouds mixed in and clear skies with a few high clouds throughout the Cloudcroft area. Now, as we uh, look at the satellite map and the radar, you can see a few showers and thunderstorms over western parts of the state. So it's the western third of New Mexico that have brunt of the gusty showers and thunderstorms on into the evening. Then it starts to die out pretty quickly. And these are pretty limited over eastern parts of the state as well. We'll zoom in and here's the Albuquerque area. You see a, a few showers try to form toward us, but they hit the dry air at the surface and they don't amount to much once you get to the Rio Grande Valley. But uh, yeah, there could be an isolated gusty shower around, but a better opportunity for tomorrow. We'll go to the south. Here's Interstate 20. You see a few showers rumbling about areas primarily to the west of Socorro and to the north of Magdalena. All right, as we look at temperatures, not as broiling as the uh, several days of triple digit heat they had across the Farmington area, but yes, hotter than normal throughout areas around Carlsbad with some limited showers and thunderstorms there on into the Roswell area and above normal temperatures from Dimming and Silver City. Look at the hot 90s from Raton, Las Vegas, 87 over in Taos. All right, here's a look at what what we're seeing for the warming trend. They had a brief cool down across eastern parts of the state uh, yesterday and look how temperatures are back on the increase there. And as we look at the conditions throughout the region tomorrow, we'll have a decent start on the day. But yes, it will be hot in the afternoon, but those scattered showers and thunderstorms will lurk a little bit closer on into Albuquerque, Santa Fe, on into Taos. We'll talk about when they'll really be on the increase along with dropping temperatures coming up in my KOT 7 weather forecast. It's going to check on traffic watch 7 now with Kiki Garcia. Kiki how is that I-25 slowdown looking that we reported earlier? Well, it's still pretty bad out there. Southbound 25 near the sun port, but it looks like it's starting to move just a bit, but not too well. You still want to avoid this area if you can. Don't forget, Broadway is getting backed up because a lot of people are using that as their alternate route. And headed out to Bernalillo, we still have, of course, construction, 528 near 550. For News Radio 96.3 FM, I'm Kiki Garcia for Traffic Watch 7.
Here are your drive times right now as we check uh, Alameda from I-25 Decores. Looking at eight minutes. That's standard. Paseo from I-25 Decores, a normal six. Montana from I-25 Decores will take you nine. Here's today's Sunshade giveaway winner. Head to KOAT.com and enter for your chance to win a Sunshade courtesy of Kirtland Federal Credit Union. The Las Cruces Police Department offering thousands to join the force. Why they are ready to recruit. And Santa Fe Public Schools wants new punchers in one of the only boxing clubs in the country. That's all next. You're watching KOAT Action 7 News. New recruitment from the Las Cruces Police Department. Now, normally the department can have more than 200 officers, but as of May, it employed just about 140. And each new class right now has just a handful of cadets. Now they're offering base incentives of a minimum of $6,000. A big investment coming to fruition for Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office. They just got this SWAT Bearcat vehicle. The $300,000 armored vehicle provides an extra layer of protection for deputies. BCSO says this acquisition was five years in the making. The Albuquerque Police Department hosted its first Coffee with a Cop in over a year today. If you missed this event in the northwest part of the city, officers say more will be coming to different areas. And if you missed on Cops and Coffee, you can join New Mexico State Police Friday in Deming for root beer floats. They will be at the Walmart at Pine Street where officers will answer your questions. That's from 6 to 8 p.m. Dozens of teachers working to update social studies standards after decades. The topics coming under debate. Student athletes calling on the state to loosen mask requirements during the summer heat. Why school districts say it's out of their hands. Plus, even with sports winding down, the NMAA is still lifting up mental health as a priority. That focus. And Stella? New Mexico hospitals have been overwhelmed in the last year, but this summer, a huge influx in patients not COVID related. I'll break down that trend for you when we come back.
You're watching KOAT Action 7 News. New Mexico leaders joining a nationwide summit today for communities and schools across the country. Education leaders are brainstorming ways for community schools to be examples in meeting student needs coming into a post-pandemic school year. A debate for the Public Education Department when it comes to changing the state's social study standards for the first time in 20 years began over a summer ago as 64 educators started writing new principles and themes. But now the debate is growing over the inclusion of critical race theory, LGBTQ history and tribal sovereignty. Student athletes asking for the state to reconsider its mask mandate for those unvaccinated. Las Cruces student athletes say the heat and masks for those unable to get vaccinated yet makes participating in activities nearly unbearable. Some say they're not getting enough oxygen when on the field, but district leaders say it's out of their hands. It's like you're breathing out hot air because you're running and then it's coming back into you. So you have all this hot air around you and you just bring it back in. It just becomes hard to breathe and you start overheating. We understand that in particular for our student athletes, it can be very difficult to perform at that level with the heat and a mask on. Unfortunately, the district is strapped to follow the guidance of the state. Dr. Scrace has said New Mexico is waiting for guidance from the federal government before making a decision. New on 7, Santa Fe Public Schools bringing back its boxing club, shut down because of COVID, and wants to welcome in new members for the fall. It's one of the only high school boxing teams in the state and country teaching technique and defensive skills. Contact this email on your screen if interested. As the season wraps up for the NMAA, leaders are continuing Wellness Wednesdays to promote mental health for students after such a difficult year. We want to make sure that through athletics and activities that we not only work at, work at it physically and mentally, but we really need to hone in on the emotional well-being of our students. And NMAA, the NMAA is also promoting the crisis hotline for athletes, and that number is 855-662-7474. Meanwhile, hospitals are full of patients, but it's not because of COVID-19. Action 7 News reporter Stella Sun tells us what's causing this. Many avoided seeing their primary care physicians during the pandemic. Now hospitals like Presbyterian behind me are packed to the brim. And the reason? Backlog in care. From UNMH. The hospitals are full. We have been full for about the last three months. To Presbyterian. Presbyterian hospitals have been uh, consistently beyond our uh, usual capacity. And across the state. There's still folks being cared for in hallways in hospitals right now because we're so full. Doctors are sounding the alarms. They say a lot of people avoided seeing their primary care physicians during the pandemic. So now we're seeing that backlog of health care that was deferred. Because some people didn't come in for regular health checkups, hospitals today are filled with people experiencing health issues like heart attacks, stroke, trauma, among others. Doctors now pleading to folks to come in and get checked out. See your primary care physician and get that health maintenance work done. Doctors say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Nobody wants to go to the hospital. It's just that if you wait and don't do any of those things you should do, then we end up with people coming into the hospital. Keep those appointments, the better. That'll spare hospital beds for the people who really, really need them. Doctors say if you're still hesitant about going to the hospital or the clinic for a checkup, virtual doctor visits are a good option too. Reporting in Albuquerque, I'm Stella Sun, KOAT Action 7 News. And doctors say while adult hospital beds are taken, pediatric hospital beds are not. Summer camps are back in Albuquerque. Registration now open for Albuquerque Parks and Recs. One week of adventure. Kids can be a part of archery, golf, biking, and even model rockets right at Balloon Fiesta Park. It's for ages 11 to 17. It begins July 12th. Santa Fe Public Schools still recruiting for summer camp learners. Spots are available for the math, math adventure camp at Capitol High School. Theme for the high seas with a focus on pre-algebra. Students can also earn high school credit. This takes place July 12th through the 30th. And with summer activities underway, a new warning from the National Lifeguard Association. They say swim at your own risk. Lifeguards are not getting hired fast enough because of the pandemic. There's no substitute for safety. Uh, and, and, and the lifeguards are a part of the safety chain. It's important to make sure there is a lifeguard on duty, even if you are a strong swimmer. A new therapeutic school is opening in Albuquerque. Albuquerque School of Healing Arts is now accepting students for its first cohort. It will be located off of Copper Avenue Northeast and opens July 1st. The semester will begin September 8th. New on 7, the UNM Taos campus is being recognized nationally. The school's efforts to focus on dual enrollment for Hispanic and tribal communities will be presented during the National Alliance of Concurrent Enrollment Partnerships Conference. It's a big win with this conference normally choosing larger universities. 
New on 7, a huge honor for one Albuquerque student, Sophie Earp, a 10th grader at Albuquerque School of Excellence, who represent the state at the National Congress of Future Medical Leaders. The two-day event will offer free services, programs, and speakers for high schoolers ready to go into medical research. Pet adoptions, meanwhile, are dropping dramatically in southern New Mexico. The Animal Services Center of Mesilla Valley says there are still hundreds of strays coming in, but adoptions are at a third of what they were in previous years. Shelter workers say that may be due to the number of adoption events they had to cancel in Las Cruces because of the pandemic. It is a constant uh, rotation here at the Animal Service Center of animals coming in and leaving. Uh, so we need people to come and adopt. We need people to come and foster and see the animals that we have. A shelter pet is not a broken pet. If you'd like to adopt, you need to call ahead on July 6th. The shelter will fully reopen for visitors. Starting tonight, you can trade movie theater seats for some floaties. This evening kicks off Bernalillo County's Dive In Movies. Just bring your own food and drink and get ready to enjoy family-friendly film at the South Valley Pool. Alcohol is not permitted. With COVID, you know, everything shut down. And so we're super excited to host our first one tonight um, at 7 o'clock. The doors open at 7 o'clock. Sounds like fun. You can catch Scoob, that's as in Scooby-Doo. That is the movie choice for tonight. The fight is on in the kitchen tonight. 505 Food Fights is back. That's where three top local chefs work to make a massive, complicated meal for the crowd. That'll be at 9 o'clock at Rustico Italian Kitchen off of Eubank. Tickets are $15, and all proceeds go to a local charity. Of course, you know it is hot and dry, but Joe, is there a chance that rain is in our forecast. That's there, a there's a chance, chance that rain is in the forecast and dropping temperatures. How do you like that? I'm the bearer of nothing but good news right <laughs> we'll now. We'll take it. Okay, here's what we're looking at right now. We have the uh, sunshine and the heat across the area. 95 degrees. Southwest winds gusting up to 22 miles an hour. That's kind of a refreshing breeze. Now, there you see some showers and thunderstorms trying to creep into our area, but when they hit the dry air at the surface, if you get near one, it's more, eh, it's going to be like a passy, gusty shower, and that's about it. But it will be picking up tomorrow. 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms so a better uh, shot for that then and then drier air works in on Friday Saturday as the day progresses some isolated showers and thunderstorms developing and it looks like a good shot at some showers and thunderstorms working in on Sunday a little less active Monday then it picks up again later next week along with some dropping temperatures now here's a look at the temperature outlook starting next week like Tuesday through the following weekend first time in a long time that I could show you a map where the forecast is for below normal daytime highs. That does not happen all that much in the month of June. However, as we go ahead and look at the precipitation outlook, again, once we get the humid air in play, there will be these disturbances wrapping across. Not that it's going to be constant rain, but at least we'll have the opportunity for some showers and thunderstorms to form off and on as we get into Sunday and then especially on into next week as well. So uh, that's a step in the right direction. We need the lower temperatures and we definitely need the moisture. More coming up in my KOT 7 forecast. You can say that again. Another roadblock for the PM Avant Grid merger. What the New Mexico Public Regulatory Commission just decided. Plus, one New Mexico film making it big on Netflix. Why filmmakers are calling it a second chance for the movie. Next.
You're watching KOAT Action 7 News. Another roadblock in the highly controversial P&M and Avangrid merger. Public Regulation Commission officials have just ordered Avangrid to explain why it withheld information on its parent company and customer service penalties. Avangrid is expected to address these issues June 28th. Get ready for more relaxation in Albuquerque. Los Poblanos is opening a new spa for guests July 1st. The Hacienda Spa will have massages and more in a yurt still under construction. This plan for a spa has been in the works for more than a year. The most watched movie on Netflix last week was from New Mexico filmmakers. Two Hearts was produced by Santa Fe Studios where pre and post production work was done. The New Mexico crew filmed in Hawaii and Vancouver. It did not make much of an impact in theaters, so Netflix gave it a second wind this month. The debate over the fate of transgender students is getting heated across the country and in New Mexico. The pushback that's happening. Also, the Vatican taking a hard stance against an anti-homophobia bill in Italy. It's argument plus. So I've had to learn how to love myself. Former American Idol runner-up David Archuleta opening up about his sexuality and religion this Pride Month, his path to vote. An outrage over this video from a California basketball game, why the team is calling out actions it says are full of racism. You're watching KOAT Action 7 News. The debate over transgender students is still going on in Alamogordo. School board members have been considering a resolution since April that would restrict participation in sports. The superintendent has argued it's not fair to allow transgender girls to compete. The school board originally had a work session scheduled for Saturday, but has since canceled it. A Virginia school board meeting ended in arrest after a debate over a controversial policy involving transgender students. That policy would allow them to use their preferred pronouns. The sheriff's office arrested two for trespassing and disorderly conduct. More than 200 people were scheduled to share opinions, but loud public demonstrations caused a unanimous vote to call off the session. People were screaming, they were cursing, they were throwing things at the school board. This is shameful. At the end of the day, we're very hopeful the school board is going to continue to do what's right for our children, protect transgender children. The school board has appealed a judge's recent decision to reinstate a teacher named Tanner Cross, who spoke out against the proposed policy for transgender students, citing his religious beliefs. They'll reconvene August 10th. 
In the historic first, the Vatican has invoked its sovereign status under a century-old treaty. The move is to protest a draft of Italian law aimed at combating homophobia. The Vatican says it could restrict the church's religious freedom and could require private Catholic schools to adjust curricula and could criminalize some public expressions of Catholic teaching on sexuality and marriage. European football fans are displaying 20,000 rainbow flags in protest to UEFA's decision to not allow an illumination in rainbow colors at the Allianz Arena. That's in response to an anti-LGBTQ law passed by Hungary's parliament last week. As Pride Month is celebrated, singer David Archuleta, who found fame on American Idol, is opening up about his struggle to come out. ABC's Steve Osinsami has the exclusive story. We've been down that road before, but that's over now. He grew up a real American Idol, singing his way into the hearts of young girls and grown women too. And no matter how anyone feels about what he wants to share here this morning, David Archuleta says he is still a man of faith and a child of God. Do you feel now that the weight has been lifted off of your shoulders? Yeah, there's so much relief to not feel like you have to hide a part of yourself, yeah. like a secret. Like how would you describe your sexual orientation? I would, I would still, I'd say I, that I don't know, I guess, some form of being bisexual, because I still, I'm still attracted to both, whether I want to or not. We I, sat down with him and it got very personal at City Winery in Nashville, where he now lives, a venue where he's performed before. Have you, have you dated a guy at this point? I, I have, I haven't. You haven't? No. Okay. No boyfriend? No. No guy? In my post, I, I mentioned I still believe in saving myself for marriage. It was this post on Instagram where the now 30-year-old devout Mormon decided to tell the world that I came out in 2014 as gay to my family, but then I had similar feelings for both genders and that he identified on a spectrum of bisexual. He had just broken up with a girlfriend. He wrote that he's sharing this to help Christians like himself who are wrestling to follow their beliefs that are so important to them. Did you pray over this? Yeah, I've, I've prayed. I was praying like, God, I, you can do all things. You, you are a God of miracles. And I, I know you've you allowed the blind to see and the, you rose the dead to rise again. So I would, I would say, please take these feelings away from me because I don't, I don't want to exp I don't want to feel things I shouldn't. I don't want to feel things that would be wrong. And I, so that's been the process. I've had to learn how to love myself, even when I don't understand why I am the way I am. But I, to learn that that's how God has created me. And I have to discover that. And there are so many millions of other people who've gone through the same thing as me, where they've tried to change who they are. Archuleta became a teenage star after placing second during the seventh season of American Idol in 2008. Tell me, where are you with your music? Um, what are you working on? Last year, I released an album during quarantine, and then um, I'm releasing a children's book as well, which I'm so excited about. It's called My Little Prayer, and it comes out in the fall of this year. He says he shared his truth with a few leaders in the Mormon church and has not felt rejected. Steve Osentami, ABC News, Nashville. As a Mormon, Archuleta completed his missionary service in 2012 in South America. Pop star Britney Spears taking the stand today in her conservatorship case to defend the end of her father's control of her $60 million fortune. She asked the judge to end the court conservatorship, which has been controlled by her father, Jamie, for 13 years. Court documents say it restricted everything from dating to the color of her kitchen cabinets. There's a real irony in that Britney was deemed incapable of managing her own money, yet she was still allowed and promoted to go out there and perform and make money. Spears told the court she had been forced into a mental health facility against her will, which she viewed as punishment for standing up for herself. As part of the Free Britney movement, she has not performed in over two years. Outrage is growing after a racist incident at the end of a California high school basketball playoff game. The fight broke out between players after Coronado High beat Orange Glen High in a close game, but then people in the stands threw tortillas toward a group of predominantly Hispanic team members from Orange Glen. 
The NAACP now asking Coronado, which won the game, to share his title or be stripped of it altogether. They knew what they were doing. They, they were throwing tortillas at a school that's predominant Hispanic and Latinos, and they were sending a message, to be honest with you. Well, the Coronado School District has identified the students responsible and is vowing disciplinary action and has fired the team's head coach. Let's get a live look outside from our Crest Cam now. It is hot. Joe says June will be winding down on a cooler note, though. That's exactly right. First of all, as we look at the pattern right now, we have some isolated gusty showers and thunderstorms. Western third of the state, kind of hot to the east with limited storms there. Tomorrow, the showers and thunderstorms creep a little bit closer to Albuquerque, Santa Fe, on into northern parts of New Mexico. So that's one bit of a change for us. But the deeper we get into the weekend, there's going to be a push of humid air, eastern parts of the state, and some of that will spill over into the west. So as we look at how much could accumulate between now and Monday, eastern New Mexico pretty favored, and with the humid air, just off and on showers and thunderstorms for a time. So we'll be in that ebb and flow where it'll be active and then taper off and then active and taper off. But at least it won't be unusually hot, which will be a treat for us. We'll start off in the morning as we get into the afternoon. It looks like there could be some scattered showers and thunderstorms around. So be alert for that. We'll be here to update you on during the four five and six o'clock newscast. You can see them kind of spotty across the area. there. still dry and hot southern eastern parts of the state from Las Cruces, Carlsbad on into Tucumcari with 80s from Raton on into the Four Corners area. That's a look at Thursday, Friday. Most areas dry out. Most areas are still pretty hot. There will be some limited showers and thunderstorms over eastern parts of the state. Then we get into Saturday and here's that uh, humid air starting to work in the northeastern parts of New Mexico. As it pushes down, it'll increase the canyon winds and spill in the humid air and drop temperatures. So that's a look at your seven day forecast. The changes that await 91 degrees with some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Drier air will works in on Friday, so sunshine and hot Saturday. Uh, it looks like it'll be dry most of the day, but a late day shower on into the evening hours and showers and thunderstorms look lightly on Sunday, so that could interrupt your outdoor activities. So we're making that an out impact day less active on Monday and then kind of uh, off and on showers and thunderstorms again for Tuesday on into Wednesday. But check out the temperatures, even if we're waiting for it to rain temperatures in the 80s. That's a big tree June going into a July, so enjoy it while it lasts. Big dip. Thank you very much, Joe. We love seeing all your photos of New Mexico that we can share here on KOAT. Look at this great view of the trail, uh, the, the trail New San Gregorio Lake. Thanks to Claudia Serafin for taking this picture and sharing it with us. And remember, anyone can do so on our you local Facebook page. Let's get a check on Traffic Watch 7 now. Kiki Garcia. Good afternoon. Well, that shutdown on I-25 southbound has now ended. Things are flowing again. However, Still busy on our secondary streets. We are seeing slowdowns on Broadway and Gibson all the way up to Rio Bravo. Just be careful in that area. And things are getting slow on the west side as well. Cores near my. All right, we lost Kiki. Let's take a look at those live drive times. Eight minutes Alameda from I-25 to Cores. Paseo from I-25 to Cores will take you seven. And Montano from I-25 to Cores will take you nine. A Kansas City Chiefs player now with an arrest on his record. Why his attorney says it was a misunderstanding. Next.
Defensive and Frank Clark has been released from, released from a Los Angeles jail after being arrested on gun possession charges. Police say they pulled Clark over for a vehicle violation but saw a gun in his car. Clark's attorney says it belongs to his bodyguard. The NFL is reviewing the incident. R. Kelly has been extradited from a Chicago prison to a federal facility in New York. It comes as his first trial for sex trafficking is scheduled August 9th in Brooklyn Federal Court. Singer Chris Brown is facing allegations of battery. L.A. police are investigating the incident that allegedly happened last week. The victim claims Brown hit her during an argument. No severe injuries were reported. This is the second time this year police have been called to Brown's home. To the movies now, where a controversial trailer has debuted, David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Tell me about your new neighbors. They're black. <laughs> Do you mind keeping it down? If you don't comply, I'll tell the manager. This is the first teaser trailer for a movie titled Karen. That's right. The IMDb description reads, a racist, entitled white woman in the South terrorizes her new black neighbors. No word when or where we might see the full film, though the teaser does include a BET Original Movies credit. Hey, Scarlett! Scarlett Johansson is the 35th American Cinematheque Award honoree. The Black Widow star and Oscar-nominated actress will receive the award at a gala and tribute November 18th in Beverly Hills. David Byrne's American Utopia is also being honored. The Tony Awards Committee is giving a special Tony to the Broadway production. The show Freestyle Love Supreme and the Broadway Advocacy Coalition will also receive special honors at the 74th Tony Awards on September 26th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Not guilty on one charge, but deadlocked on others. We have a reaction from both sides of the courtroom in the trial against Leland Hust. Police officers leaving APD as the homicide count continues to rise. What the department is doing to try and keep officers in town. Coverage you can count on. KOAT Action 7 News at 5 starts right now. We are following a breaking traffic alert in Albuquerque. I-25 southbound near the Sunport back open. According to APD, as you can see, traffic is moving very smoothly. It was shut down for a few hours after a chase which started when a security guard was being threatened with a gun at the Hawthorne Inn. But again, it is all cleared up. A Valencia County jury found Leland Hust not guilty of murder and death of six-year-old Ariana Jade Romeo. Anchor Sasa Leninger was in the courtroom when that verdict was read. Doug, the jury of 12 found Leland Huss, as you said, not guilty of murder, but they were at a complete deadlock when it came to the two other charges in this trial, rape and child abuse resulting in death. They told the judge that they just could not come to a unanimous decision when it came to those two charges. Now, of course, this verdict comes after about 17 hours of deliberations here over a three day period in a trial that was about two and a half weeks long. The state, as you can imagine, not happy with this outcome. They tell us they want justice for Ariana Jade Romeo, and they do plan to get it. As for the defense, Leland's attorney says Hust will stay in jail because those two deadlock charges could be retried. You no, know, he's going to stay in custody, and, you know, as his counsel, obviously we can't really discuss our, our strategy moving forward, uh, but uh, we're going to see what our options are and, and uh, see what we can come up with for him. It's hard to describe that. Um, it's just, you know, we put in a lot of work. Um, the victims, the, all the families, they have to relive this over again. I think everyone was hoping for closure and, and nobody got that today. As for when that retrial will happen, the state says they do not see that happening anytime soon. In most circumstances, it usually takes at least six months before a retrial can happen. Now, I do want to say when that verdict was read inside of this courtroom right here, we did see Leland Hust and his family break down into tears when they heard he was not guilty of murder. As for the family of Ariana Jade Romeo, we're told her mother was not in this courtroom. We did not see her, uh, but prosecutors say she did have to catch a flight back home, uh, but her her attorney says they did speak with her. She says she is disappointed in this outcome here today, but she is willing and ready to go through this again to get her daughter justice. Live in Los Lunas this evening, I'm Sasha Leninger, KOAT Action 7 News. Back to you. President Biden has laid out his plan on trying to reduce gun violence. This includes cracking down on gun dealers violating federal laws and repurposing millions in coronavirus relief funding toward police departments. The president is also repeating his request for Congress to pass gun control laws. So the reality is there's more guns on the street. You have a, a really divided, angry population right now. Uh, the pandemic was over and there's just a lot of people out of work. So the stressor factors are pushing these numbers up. 
The president's announcement comes after repeated attacks from Republicans blaming the defund the police movement for the rise in crimes. A member of the Oath Keepers who was involved in the January riots will not serve any jail time. Graydon Young pleaded guilty. He was one of 16 defendants accused of being part of the far-right group believed to have plotted the insurrection. Young also agreed to cooperate with prosecutors. The Supreme Court has ruled police officers will need a warrant to enter a suspect's home based on the case. Justice Elena Kagan wrote in her opinion that a fleeing suspect does not always qualify as an emergency. She adds when the officer has time to get a warrant, he must do so. The ruling overturns a lower court decision finding no warrant was ever required in such a circumstance. An arrest made in the Ditto fire. Jonathan Bernard is accused of starting it in the Bosque in Los Lunas. He faces one count of felony arson. Valencia County officials say the fire is now 20% contained. We're going to identify all the trees that are burning on top and we're either going to uh, flag them for when our, our chainsaw guy gets here or we're going to run hose lays in with straight bore nozzles to spray them. And we're going to update you on that firefight coming up at 6. Parts of the Gila National Forest closed as they continue the Battle of the Johnson Fire. This will mainly be around the Little Bear Trail area. As of this afternoon, more than 87,000 acres have burned with 12% containment as it continues to burn toward the river. In Santa Fe, city officials have placed fire restrictions before the 4th of July. This is due to ongoing drought and keeping the community safe. Now, the resolution states fireworks cannot be used within city limits. The city still will hold its 4th of July celebration, which includes a car show. The show starts at 11 a.m. at the Vintage Car Club. Hot conditions with a few storms rumbling. Chief Neurologist Joe Diaz shows us where. Okay, we'll start off in the metro area. It's kind of hot, kind of steamy at times. We have a few clouds building across the area. We're at 94 degrees, but uh, you see uh, winds are kind of light right now around south, about nine miles an hour. We've been as high as 95, so that's about three above where we should be for this time of year. Now, notice we do have some showers. They approach the Rio Grande Valley and they kind of evaporate. So if you get near some of these tonight, you're going to get more some gusty winds than anything else. But that will be picking up in the days ahead. Another storm right around the Carlsbad area, so they're hot. And they have an isolated shower thunderstorm with a lot of thunder and lightning. If you hear that thunder, make sure you get inside a sturdy building. You can see everybody in the 80s and 90s throughout the northern part of the state and the triple digit heat from Alamogordo, Roswell, Carlsbad on into Hobbs with a 107 over in the Tucumcari area. So the hot conditions continue over eastern parts of the state. We have a shot for an isolated shower or thunderstorm tonight. We'll start off the day decent tomorrow. Storms on the increase. Temperatures dropping. We'll show you when and where. Coming up in my KOAT 7 weather forecast. More than 60% of eligible New Mexicans 16 and older are fully vaccinated as we finally get to our reopening goal officially, while nearly 69% have received at least their first dose. Top U.S. health officials are very concerned the Delta variant could cause a resurgence of COVID in the U.S. later in the year. Recent models show the virus is 60% more transmissible than the U.K. variant. But Dr. Fauci believes it's unlikely there will be a return in surge of cases seen last year unless it's in areas where vaccination rates are low. We have the tools, so let's use them and crush the outbreak. A new poll from Monmouth finds one in five Americans won't get the shot, while 25% say they are concerned about another surge with the low vaccination rates. With variants growing, the CDC is preparing for booster shots. Right now, doctors say the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are able to protect against it. However, they want to make sure they are ready if the Delta variant gets worse. We, you know, in an interagency way are planning to boost um, because quite honestly, we want to make sure that um, if we see more disease out there, we have a mechanism, we're fully ready to combat it. But Dr. Walensky does not think the CDC has enough data on boosters to make a decision about timelines. In New Mexico, 76 new COVID cases reported along with two more deaths. 76 people are currently in the hospital and there have been more than 193,000 recoveries. State health officials say hospitals are full again, but not because of COVID. They say they're starting to see more people with other illnesses and issues. This is likely because some people avoided going to the doctor out of fear of catching the virus. So they are now urging everyone to get a health checkup. Nobody wants to go to the hospital. It's just that if you wait and don't do any of those things you should do, then we end up with people coming into the hospital. Doctors say while many adult hospital beds are taken, there are some available at pediatric hospitals. 
Well, here is a reminder about our stage two coronavirus hotlines. If you're sick or have symptoms, 855-600-3453. The other number is for any other COVID issue, 833-551-0518. And these are always on KOAT.com. Vice President Kamala Harris will be in El Paso Friday for a visit to the border. This comes as several Republican lawmakers and the national media questioned her for not making a stop during her trip to Guatemala and Mexico earlier in the month. Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas will also be with the VP. Congresswoman Yvette Harrell also sharing her thoughts in a tweet. She writes, it's about time the VP visited the border. To understand the situation, she needs to bring a bipartisan delegation and listen to the ranchers, farmers, and residents who see the border crisis every day. Two watchdog groups are accusing Immigration and Customs Enforcement agents of targeting people protesting the conditions at its facilities. The report was released on Wednesday. It claims ICE agents subjected the immigrants to force feedings and forced hydration when they were on a hunger strike. It also claims when workers refused to do that, private prison medical staff would. ICE denies it retaliates in any way against detainees undergoing any kind of hunger strike. The Supreme Court hands a freedom of speech victory to a high school cheerleader. Matt Pritchard is in Washington, D.C. and what the decision means. Freedom of speech debate. In an 8-1 decision, the Supreme Court says a high school cheerleader was within her rights when she posted a profanity-laced message on social media. One of the things that seems to unite liberals and conservatives on this court is a belief in the value of free speech. The case stems back to Brandy Levy being denied a spot on the varsity cheer squad and after school sending two Snapchat photos holding up her middle finger and voicing displeasure with the decision. Now, those photos made it back to school officials who removed Levy from the junior varsity squad for one year. Now, the justices say the school overstepped its bounds. You're talking about 24 hour policing of student speech. And he said that's something schools should take into account. That's not appropriate. But the court makes clear schools still have some authority on speech that happens outside the classroom. In instances like bullying, like harassment of a particular student. Making this a more narrow ruling rather than a sweeping decision. In Washington, Matt Pritchard, KOAT, Action 7 News. Justice Clarence Thomas was the lone dissenter in that decision. The Albuquerque Police Department seeing more officers leaving. We're going to look at why and what APD is doing to try and keep them. Plus, the Vice President sharing her thoughts on voting rights during a virtual roundtable. And coming up at 6, payments for the child tax credit will make their way to families next month. What do you need to know before getting that first check? Well, let's get a check on Traffic Watch 7 now with Kiki Garcia. Doug, well, we have uh, secondary streets very slow right now because of earlier activity on I-25. Broadway, Gibson, Rio Bravo, slow going if you are headed that way home this afternoon. Just take your time. Of course, construction in Bernalillo is causing a little slowdown as well. 515 near 528. For News Radio 96.3 FM, I'm Kiki Garcia. For Traffic Watch 7. Kiki, thank you. Here are drive times at 510 Alameda from I-25 to Coors, not bad at 8 minutes. Paseo to Coors looking good in the green at 6 and Montaña to Coors, 9.
You're watching KOAT Action 7 News. As the city's on its way to setting a record number for homicides, APD Union says there is a record number of officers leaving, including rookies. Nancy Lofton tells us what's going on and how it could impact your safety. APD Union leaders say it's not uncommon to hear veteran officers talking about leaving the department. What they say is uncommon now that rookies are leaving. It is an emotional interview by an APD officer who union leaders say has been with the department for about one year. Which isn't something normal for me because, you know, most of my life I've, like I said, just realized, hey, do the right thing, work hard, get through it. <laughs> Sorry. The officer says he wanted to become a police officer since he was a teen after 9-11. He says he was three weeks out of training with APD when he and his partner, who's also a rookie, tried to arrest a man after investigating a domestic violence call. He proceeded to fight us. We used force on him, got him in custody, and we're in trouble for that, a lot of trouble. The officer, who is not identified in this video, says after that arrest, he was part of an internal affairs investigation to see if department procedures were followed during that arrest. A spokesman for APD told us it is difficult to respond to the rookie officer's claims without knowing the officer's identity and details about the case he's talking about in this video. APD union leaders say they plan on airing more of these personal stories on YouTube because they say so many officers are leaving. As for the officer, the union says he's taking a job out of state. My entire career, my entire, co my entire college career going through, like, giving up another career, actually. <clears throat> and I moved my family out here and my wife and everything. <clears throat> In Albuquerque, I'm Nancy Laughlin, KOT Action 7 News. We also reached out to the Department of Justice Monitor, but they did not call back.